So now let's create a digital asset so we can open this in Unreal. Uh, before I forget, we can also here put a frame around this as well. So we know that this is controlling our masks or layers in, or are the layers for the material. To make a digital asset, I'm going to make a digital asset based on the object level. So later, if I want to create multiple objects, I can do that as well. So it doesn't only stay in the geometry level or sub level. So from this node, I'm going to create a sub network. Then on the sub network, right click, create digital asset, and we're going to save our digital asset. Just going to call it procedural terrain project one. Then this menu will pop up. So of course here we can go to our parameters here. This will be the parameters you will see in Unreal as well. And by default, because we created an object level, we have some parameters already here. So I'm going to select them all and I'm going to click invisible because I don't need to see them. So we can create our own parameters, but before I'm going to create my own parameters, I'm just going to test out if actually everything is working. So I'm going to bring this into Unreal. So here in Unreal, I drag and drop my digital asset. And now let's also drag this into my scene. And if everything is working, you would now see here our terrain in Unreal. So we have the exact same result from Houdini now in Unreal, but now on the height field working with the landscapes of Unreal. Now we can also see that everything is still without a material. It's just a default material with a checker pattern on it. So, but let's also take a closer look actually at our material settings. So here we can switch to our landscape. When I go to the paint mode in my landscape, I can actually see here layer one and layer two. So these are the layers that I created in Houdini. So these will automatically get transferred here into our paint mode or our the splat map that controls where materials will be. So it's important to know that we automatically have this over here. So now the only thing that I need to do is assign a material. So I've already have a material that's set up nicely here. Here is the base setup for my material. So what I mainly do is I load in my textures. Then I create a full uh, material here. So and I do this three times. So because I have three different layers, so I have a grass, rock, and a more dirt layer. Then here I'm going to use here the node for uh, landscape blending or layer blending. And in here we can then blend with our features here and also based on our height map. And then I directly put this into our terrain. Now also important here or interesting is we can also have a procedural grass placement based on our terrain layer. So for placing our grass, I'm actually going to use the Unreal system to automatically place our grass based on my grass layer for my terrain. So I'm not going to place grass in Houdini. I'm going to place foliage and vegetation in Houdini, but grass, I'm going to automatically handle that with Unreal. So to assign a material in Houdini, we're going to right click on the material and going to copy the reference. So this will copy the path on where this location is. So let's go back to our network and at the end here I'm going to use the Unreal Material node. So this will be here, placing Unreal Material node. So automatically we have an attribute called Unreal Material and here we're going to paste our path that I just copied from our game engine. So for Unity it will be also very similar approach as well. Then also to be sure, I'm going to place down an output node because I always want this to be the output. Then I'm going to save my asset. Save. In Unreal, I'm going to here click Rebuild Asset. So here's my terrain now rebuilt with our material on this. And as you can see, it really follows the layers that I have in Houdini. And then based on your material, you can play around. You can play around with, of course, how these uh, values are handled. And of course, everything you see here is used from Quixel. So we are using the Quixel library 
to decorate the scene, to create our materials and so on. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that at the moment, R2 is not working that fast. So the reason why it's not working super fast at the moment is basically because of this system. So the erode node itself will take a lot of resources to calculate because it's going to have to calculate 10 frames. So this will take most of the time to calculate. Then it will still calculate the slope and so on. So what we could do or we, what we will do is we're going to bypass this for the moment. And when you want to see the finished result, you're going to show that result. So for the moment being, what I'm actually going to do is connect this over here directly. So they will give a way different result, but for temporarily viewing it, this is the fastest way. So let's say for asset again, and when I now rebuild my terrain, it's going to be much faster. So as you can see, it was faster, but it also looks way different. It looks way more intense. And you can definitely see that the erode node does a great job at making this a bit more natural. So now let's also add a few parameters here. The first thing I want to do actually here is create a folder. And this folder will contain our base settings for the terrain. So our terrain settings. And the first setting I want to use is here. I want to control by height field and the size. So I'm going to expose the size parameter here. And just to recall it to terrain size. So pressing apply, this will now have a link. I'm going to copy paste this link. So the X and Y are the same. Then further down here, I would like to then have a system also that handles here a custom object from Unreal. So what I want is an object merge node. And with an object merge node, I can actually call an object from Unreal. And then I want to use a switch node. And I'm going to use the switch if going to place it here and plug these in over here and we're going to write a basic expression in here so at the moment my object merge node has no information so it has zero points primitives vertices so what we can do is we can ask the number of points of the object merge node and that is going to be our switch so number of points from input number zero. So if that would be equal to zero, then it will return one, which will basically return this information. But as soon as my input here has, for example, a box, you will see that the other input now has been taken because this statement is not true anymore, it's false. So it will return zero, which will result in outputting the first cube. So this is a very useful system to automatically switch between this. So when you open the tool in Unreal, you automatically have sort of a default layout. And then when you plug in your own shapes, it will automatically switch here to your own shapes. So plug this in over here. Now I might create more folders and I'm gonna create subfolders here. So adding to the terrain, and I'm going to create another folder for subtracting to the terrain. Let's expose here the object node. So this is where we can input our shapes. So input shapes, and I'm going to do the same here for the subtraction. And exposing the object here. Again, so input shapes. And I'm also going to actually place down a switch here because I don't always want to subtract. So in case you don't want to subtract, so I'm going to expose this value here. So enable and set this from integer to a toggle. So it's a toggle based instead of a integer. So now we have that. So now we can add and subtract shapes. Let's also play around here with the blur amount. So blurring. So blur inputs. Then 
we can also expose the distortion. So here, this distort. Then I want to play around here with the noise. So I'm going to expose these as well. I'm going to call this noise noise one, noise one strength and noise one scale. Then I will do the same here for the other noise. And this is then my noise two. So now we have some settings here to control. You can get more settings, like you can play around here with the masks. It could be very interesting as well to control the masks if you want it. But for the moment, let's just test this out. One more thing before I go to Game Engine is I'm going to skip this resample node, which was increasing the resolution. So adding this resolution will also slow down the tool in Unreal. So that's something to keep in mind that if you want to work, that if you want to have something fast to just block out the level, then we keep the resolution as low as possible. So we can work very fast in Game Engine. So here in Unreal, I have rebuilt my digital asset and now let's test out our parameters that we have made. So first of all, we have here our size. So let's say we want to have a bigger terrain. I can press a bigger value and now my terrain is now a little bit bigger. So in case you want to create bigger worlds, you can play around with the size of the terrains. Now we also have here our blur value. As you can see, these are now getting less blurred. But I like to have it somewhat blurred like that. Then we can also do some distort. And this is again a lot. This value is something that you have to watch out with. So what we can do in Houdini is clamp this value so it doesn't go that much up. So let's open our menu of digital asset creation. We can go to our distort and in here we can set a certain range. So from 0 to for example 25. I think 25 will be a great value and now as you can see here we have now a better slider that is less intensive then we can also have here our noises so we can add some noise we can also clamp these values if you want to because most of the time you don't want that much noise going on and of course we can also play test this so i can just press play i have my third person blueprint here and I can walk around the terrain. So this is already quite huge terrain. So because I'm using 100 units, this is already quite a uh, large terrain. So to use our custom object, I want to switch this from geometry to world outliner input. So this basically say I can choose an object in my world or scene. So for now I don't have any like simple shapes, so I'm gonna for example, get here a cube and maybe also get the cone one. So I can scale this up as big as I want to. Like this, for example. And I want to project this then, for example, here. And I can also do this then with my cone. Now to assign, we're going to click start selecting. We're going to click them, shift to click more, and then use current selection as projection. And as you can see now, we are projecting this into the terrain. Also be careful with the noise. I noticed that when you have a big noise in here, your terrain has then difficulties looking at this cube. So, but overall, you won't go that intense with the noise. The noise is just meant to get rid of the flat plane feeling so you can see that the plane is not fully flat it's just to have a little bit noise in there what i also like to do is in the cube here itself i like to first of all disable the collider so we don't want any collision of this and i also want to click here actor hidden in the game and when i press the g key i can now see this turning on and off so it's very useful you can also disable that uh, costing shadow if you want to and I can do the same now with this tube here as well. So this tube can then be used to, for example, create a mountain. So I'm also going to set this hidden in game and make sure the collision is disabled. So I can now pretty much uh, block out my level and create a certain layout for a scene. 
Now what I also want to do for this project is to create a blockout tool which will create a more defined shapes than just these cubes or tubes. So that was it for this part. So this part was mainly about creating a basic terrain setup and then we can later then improve this and later we're going to improve on this by adding stairs, cliffs, creating trees and so on. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.